your drive with Lori and Damien on Mix 93.8. For the next two weeks, we're going to be talking to small business owners, hearing about their triumphs and challenges and how they prepared for the unexpected. This segment is brought to you by First for Women Insurance, who offer tailor-made insurance for women-owned small businesses. Joining us on the line, we've got Izan Hamilton Clitter and Larissa Cornelius from Enfold. Ladies, welcome to the show. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Oh, we are so, so good. So we're going to dive straight into us. Please tell us about your business. Well, at Enfold, we're all about strategy and winning, but not just any kind of winning. We specialize in crafting those winning proposals, tenders and pitches that businesses need to seal the deal. Um, and what drives us is a real passion for seeing businesses succeed. You know, when they win work because of our help, it's not just about the contracts or the money. It means real jobs for real people, keeping them employed mm. and making a positive impact on their lives. And that's what we're truly passionate about. Now, how has being a female-owned uh, business benefited you guys in, in terms of, of the field that you guys are in? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't really think that being a, a, a female-owned business has magically given us some benefit yeah. mm. um, just because of the label. But I think what makes a difference is us being women and how we run things. Because it's about uh. that touch we bring, our professional work ethic, the way we lead our teams, our sometimes wacky ideas that the clients love, mm. and how we understand business and life. So, yeah, I think it's about... Um, us being women rather than being a woman-owned business. Wow, that's really, really cool. I, I love, you know, the words that you use there, but if there was anything that you could change about this experience or improve upon, what would it be? Um, okay, well, if there's one thing I could change, it would be to bring greater awareness to the significance of proposals and tenders in, in, in winning business. It's surprising to us how many organizations are unaware that there's a professional association dedicated to this field called the Association of Proposal Management Professionals. And in South Africa, we have some serious catching up to do around adopting best practices. And it's this lack of awareness and focus that's creating barriers for businesses to try and compete. And as we know, a major challenge we face in our country is unethical behavior, Mm. which casts a doubt or a shadow over the fairness and equality of, you know, tendering processes. Mm. And it's something we can address through education and implementing proper controls. So ultimately, we want to see a future where fraud and corruption are eradicated completely. I think most wow. South Africans would totally agree with you there. In, in fold for president, <laughs> eh? Well, as business, <laughs> as, as business owners, what would you say is your most unexpected moment and how did you manage to deal with this? Sure. You know what? Um, let me tell you about a curveball that we didn't see coming last year. We we were gearing up for growth at one of our very big clients, and they suddenly decided that it was, say, the money season. That's what we called it. <laughs> um, they started chopping costs left, right, and center, and we were banking on their ambitions and maybe putting too much, um, or too many eggs in their basket. Yeah. Mm. As a small business, this really hit us very close to home. But what we did was instead of retrenchments, we first opened up lines of communication with our team. So we were brutally honest, probably more honest than most companies ever are with employees. Um, then we took a, a, a very hard look at our budget. We chopped back on executive salary. Mm-hmm. Then we started getting really inventive and we allowed people to buy back some of their time. So they worked oh, late, wow. got family time and got paid less, of course. Very, very and, interesting. Yeah, and sales, we, we definitely upped our sales. So, um, we survived it, we came out stronger, and we are still doing a lot of work for that particular client. Wow. It sounds like you're, you're really evolving, and I think as a successful business, you have to do that at any point in, in, in time, you know. What would take your business to the next level in conclusion, it's on and Larissa? I think the main focus is scaling up so that we can truly embody, you know, that wise adage of working on your business rather than just in it. You know, scaling operations, it's a real challenge, especially when you have limited resources, funding, and time. And, you know, I know a lot of small businesses like us can relate to that. Up until now, we've been fully self-funded. But as we continue to expand, we recognize that we need to seek external funding and support. 
And we'll reach that success with a combination of obviously investing in expanding, maintaining our commitments, and obviously leveraging the unique talents of our team. Ladies, thank you so mm. much for your time. And, and it's been really interesting to hear you talk about your business and, and what you're involved in. We really, really appreciate it. And we wish you all the best for the future.